I guess the irony for this week's video is that it got delayed. Because that's what I'm talking about. Obviously, the news has come this past week that GTA 5 on the PC has now been delayed uh, to, I think, late March. When it was supposed to be coming out, I believe it was not next week, but the week, not this coming week, but the week after. Whatever it was, it was supposed to come out at the end of this, uh, January. And the internet sort of gone, you know, ah, we were looking forward to it. And let's be honest, they've done it with a lot of things. I'm quickly going to look through the list of everything that's set to come out through Amazon and all that uh, throughout this year that's been delayed. So obviously GTA 5, because I still need to change that on my list. Dying Light, I think, was originally supposed to be coming out in 2014 at first, but then got shoved to 2015. Not, it wasn't like a definitive date thing like some of them have been, but that was a, a, that was a, a victim of getting delayed to the next year. Evolve got delayed to February the 10th. Also Evolve, you're doing a beta for a game that's already gone gold. Technically, that's what's called a free demo. Not a beta. A beta only exists when the game hasn't gone gold yet. Just being technical and everything. Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, I think, has had a delay of about a week in Europe. But I don't know how many people are looking forward to that one. Whatever. Uh, just having a quick look through. Project Cars was a big one. Uh, they delayed that. The reason they delayed that one was because they said it didn't want to go up against competition. Well, we all won't know how Drive Club fared. Forza Horizon simply disappeared without trace, which is a shame, because that's a pretty good game. And uh, what was the other one? What was the other car racing one? Oh, Battlefield. Yeah, I'm still... The way they were pushing that as, oh, here's the car racing bit, it was nonsensical. Oh, but, of course, they are doing a Need for Speed in 2015. It's a mobile game. Which I have problems. I don't have a problem with mobile games, which will be a future video. But it certainly is a case that Need for Speed doesn't need to be a mobile game. It needs to be on consoles. But regardless, actually, Battlefield Hardline is one of them. Was supposed to be coming out last year. Now got delayed to uh, 17th of March. Um, at least this is the uh, American dates. Most of these I'm going by. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations 2 has now been delayed by a week. The episodic content when it starts up in February, that's got delayed. Uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue, well that isn't really a delay, it's just coming to the PC a lot later, which is, yeah, whatever. Witcher 3 Wild Hunt was supposed to be coming out in February, then got delayed to May. Uh, Batman Arkham Knight was supposed to be coming out, then got delayed. Tom Clancy's Division sort of got hyped, got delayed. Metal Gear Solid Five. they had to do so much of a job there, they had to do a demo in Ground Zeroes, which, you know, demo is sort of not really. Um, just having a quick look, I think that's pretty much everything, looking at this list. I don't think anything else has been delayed or cancelled or anything. I guess Dead Island 2? No, that was, no, that's, I'm getting that computer dying light. There's an irony there. But, yeah. As you can see, quite a lot of games have suffered from delays and everything. And even going into the past, and this is sort of the other topic that I'm trying to cover here. Games have been delayed in the past, but people have pretty much enjoyed them. I mean, the only one that probably falls into got delayed and then still did badly was Drive Club. Because that was delayed by a year and it still really didn't work. It's a bit of a shame. But, oh, thinking about it, I don't, I don't think Last of Us got delayed. I think Bioshock might have been delayed by a little bit. I, c I can't remember. I think Mass Effect might have been... Quite a lot of big games have had delays and people have, on the whole, been actually, when they've been delayed, supportive of them. And this is, this is really where I want to get to the crux of the thing. 
because I want to look at it in two aspects. Firstly, on the developer front, the big issue about last year is that games weren't ready. Most notably, Ubisoft. Far Cry 4 wasn't too bad and was probably the best of the bunch of their mainstream titles. I'm not talking like Child of Light or anything, because that was a good game. And, uh, what was it? Valiant Hearts The Great War. Good game, because it's a small indie thing. Your big blockbusters were the ones that struggled. Watch Dogs really didn't get enough traction. And all the kerfuffle and furore over the visuals not being as good, and actually they had been... Uh, unenhanced, if that's the thing. They'd actually been scaled down. I think that's the right technical term. They'd been scaled down in order to actually make it look better on certain platforms. Which is neither confirmed nor denied. Well, more denied, but there sort of is rumour that it's pretty much confirmed. But that's obviously conjecture and everything. Uh, the other ones, the crew, have suffered from major technical issues at launch, even when that got delayed. And then, of course, we had Assassin's Creed Unity, which got delayed by a month, and then still came out and was very buggy. And I think some of it, some people have had it uh, improved now. But other people have actually, in very rare cases, actually found the game has now working worse than it was before. Which I don't think is the aspect of trying to fix things. When you try and fix things, the idea is to not break them anymore. But obviously another one is Halo. The fact that nearly all the multiplayers weren't working for that, and some still aren't properly to this day. The irony, of course, is... The Halo 5 beta is working perfectly. So the beta for the game, which is coming out, what, in nine months, let's say, by the end of this year, that works fine. But the actual game that's been out for two months, no. Nope. And this is the aspect that I want to really focus on. And this is mainly targeted at Ubisoft, but they won't listen. Because we already know that there's an Assassin's Creed game coming more than likely this year. And of course, going on uh, Ubisoft, they've got like two or three Tom Clancy games. You've got Division and Siege, or Rainbow Six Siege, which probably means there'll be another one. They might even debut Watch Dogs 2. Who knows? Well, all I do know is perhaps they need. You know, it's surprising to say they need to do an EA, but they delayed a need for speed because they didn't think they could do a good enough job. And actually, they skipped a year. You know, the Medal of Honor games skipped a year. They weren't going to bring that out. Instead, of course, you had Battlefield Hardline, which then in itself got delayed because people realized Battlefield 4 has only been out for less than a year. And as only as only in recent months or so had its proper sort of fan base grow, and it needs more time to mature. What the people, what players wanted, was a franchise that lasted two years. Every game, hence Battlefield Three, was a two or three year gap to Battlefield Four. They don't want it to be annualized like Call of Duty because. There's a lot more fun that can be had with various little things in Battlefield than there is on the maps because they're fast-paced with Call of Duty. And I know people are trying to meet the profit and losses of their balance sheets, but in essence, if you spend more time on a product and make sure it is working properly, rather than ship it out with a day one patch that may or may not fix it, as we saw a few times this year, then you're going to get more revenue in the end. The reviews, both user and the critic, don't get me started on that. That's, a, that's such a murky thing with this whole Gamergate thing. But I just want to stand by and watch it because I can't be bothered to, to give any comment on it because I'll either be seen as a... Uh, anti-gamergate person or a pro-gamergate person 
So I prefer to just watch and go, I don't know what this is about. People just need to make common sense rather than try and you try and use the tag of Gamergate for their own personal means. Whichever goal that may be, whether you are supporting it or whether you're against it. I'm sticking so firmly on that fence, the fence post is coming out of my mouth. Straight up. Leaving that there. Oh, that took a dark turn, didn't it? Ah, uh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's creepy. Anyway, moving swiftly on. The thing that also needs to be taken into account is, the f obviously, as I sort of led into at the start, the players. The players want to get their hands on the game now, but they have to accept, like with the developers, do you want a useless, broken game, Assassin's Creed Unity, on time? Or would you prefer to wait three months, still pay full price, yet get a game which is actually functioning properly and working really good? And this is the thing. This is full price. Normally, if you wait, oh, I don't know, two or three months, the shops start reducing it a bit. Rather than $60, it'll be 50 As they want to make way for the new games and the new stock, which they'll want to push more because it's newer. You know, by, by the time Battlefield Hardline comes out in... Well, perhaps I shouldn't really give that because Call of Duty has the DLC. But, I mean, the game that's just coming out this coming week, Saints Row 4, the next-gen version, the re-elected one, and the Get Out of Hell DLC. I'm pretty sure that by April, that game will be... I mean, it's already, I think, cheap anyway. I think the, the game of the year, or the remastered edition, the re-elected one... I think that's about $40, but I wouldn't be surprised if that came down to 30 or 20 by the time you've got arguably bigger games that will challenge it and not leave it played as much. With Evolve coming in February and Battlefield Hardline and the definitive edition of Devil May Cry and Project Cars and... Uh, Mortal Kombat, Dark Souls 2 on next gen, all that over the next three months. Now let's say, for instance, even though we know it isn't because I've seen streams, Saints Row 4 re-elected was buggy and problematic. People would be willing to wait until April, I would hope, to have the bugs fixed and have it playable and be more fun to have less problems with it and pay the same money. You know, it's forty dollars. It's forty dollars now, broken, and then three months later, it'll be twenty dollars. Or let the game uh, get delayed for three months, and then make them pay forty dollars when it's actually fit and proper. This is how we're going to get a less of a case of people being cheated out of their money for various different things. You know, people feel that it wasn't worth paying the $80 or whatever for Assassin's Creed Unity Digital Edition. There was somebody that I did see on uh, um, one of the Facebook pages I frequent saying that they got the Special Edition WWE 2K15 on Next Gen, I believe, for $70 or $80. And there were some issues, perhaps... Uh, there were there weren't that many issues online from what I can tell there was still a few problems here and there and of course gameplay but that's stuff or what you know that's that stuff that's already in the game that's not it wasn't really probably errors in the code but a couple of months on and the person said they went on to Amazon and found the same thing that they bought even with the pre-order stuff that would only be available as a pre-order was now available as a bundle for the original price of the game, which was $60. And 
it's that sort of issue that people need to also think about. If the reviews say the game is buggy, you might want to wait. One, for it to fix, and two, it might go down in price. But if you're talking about a new proper game that's coming out, people sort of complained at first that, oh, it's a shame that Batman isn't now coming out till June. But then Rocksteady did it smart by releasing little gameplay bits and everything here and there, teasing what's in there, new features that haven't been in the game before, which is still wetting people's appetite. And no doubt, when the game comes out in, um, I'm pretty sure it's the first week in June, there, the week before E3, that will be probably getting the same amount of acclaim, give or take, hopefully, that The Last of Us got uh, a couple of years back. Which would probably be well-deserving, because it's, the, it's more than likely the end to the franchise. I don't know where they could go afterwards. Arkham, I don't know, Arkham Prince, Arkham, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. But it's just, be patient, people, be patient. I think it was something to do with Guinness that said good things come to those who wait. Wow, I need an alcohol now.